McFarland. I decided it was time for another update. Yeah, I got some color over here on, uh, on my scenic separator. Uh, this week I made a momentous decision, or at least I think it is. I think it's in, it has far-reaching implications because uh, I decided what my ballast will be for this layout. You can see some laid over here on test. This is the color of it. Without glue or anything else, just raw. It's a combination. I had a special ballast I used on my last layout too, but it was fine. You may or may not remember, or may or may not have seen, the uh, study I did on ballast. I went out and measured some on a local main line here, BNSF. Um, Alan Plum did some research over in the UK there um, on a uh, heritage line and uh, looked at some various sized ballast pieces stone pieces and I also read quite a bit on the internet at various papers and studies uh, that people have done on ballast and in my study I created this uh, scatter chart uh, relating to the size of ballast as you can see, the sizes are all over the place. I'll put the link to that. <clears throat> I'll put the link to that a video in the description down here. But uh, based on that, and I did it for all scales too. By the way, I, I scaled it down the my actual uh, field research I scaled all those down into various scales in scale I was working on in scale at the time so I was really interested in that but OO scale HO scale O scale all those charts are uh, I created and this is the one for uh, 1 to 1 to 76 I know you can't see that I'll put it up on screen. As you can see, that it's all over the place, size-wise. So that's what I tried to mimic in my in my ballast mixture. I didn't use the very biggest stones that uh, they had. I thought that would be very cumbersome to manage, and uh, they could be a problem for me. So I I didn't use those. But this is what I've come up with. I'll move you closer. Now there are many things to consider when you're uh, thinking about choosing some ballast. Um, color, stone size, texture, look, many things. Well, I, I personally don't like um, ballast that's all exactly the same color. I think that looks boring and it doesn't look realistic because real ballast, if you go out and look at it, They'll have little black stones in places and, uh, I mean, mixed in with it. You know, you'll see black and you'll see white and you'll see, or light colored anyway, and grays of all kinds. And I, I tried to mimic this. Um, of course, ballast varies from area to area, rail, railway to railway, and what's available. I mean, they just used whatever stone they could get their hands on, whatever was close. So that's going to be the ballast of Farland, Farland 2. Okay, another thing that has, has occurred since we last spoke, so I've created the ramps. I need to glue that down, don't I? Most of this is glued down, but... I didn't glue it around the ramps. 
Um, once again, planked, stained. Same at the other end. I won't bother to show it to you. And the center island is done. These were kind of interesting in the process. I, uh, I used the plywood and I cut out the shape I wanted out of the plywood. And then I put the uh, planking on it. And it looked, you know, I didn't try to, to match the shape of it because I would trim that later. But here's the way they looked mid-process mid after the planking was on but it hadn't been trimmed yet. It's sort of a work of art. I probably should have kept one just uh, like that, just for the heck of it. Put it up on the wall or something. So I, I've got a little bit done. I need to put... I need to put the uh, platform canopies on. I've got two of them I want to put on here. And I, it just occurred to me yesterday how I was going to get the wires down for the lighting that I want in them. The canopies on my last layout were very dark uh, because there was no lighting underneath them. I had lighting beside them, which I'll have on this too, but there was no lighting under them. And I'm going to, red, uh, I'm going to uh, fix that on this layout and I'm going to put lighting in underneath the canopies. It took me a while to figure out how I was going to get that. It's about at two and a half inches from here to the underside of the table. And trying to get a wire to fish down through there through a little tiny hole and quite a bit of its foam um, would be challenging. Well I finally it occurred to me that I can drill through with the small size drill I want to be on this side and then I can drill up from the bottom once I've located where that hole is with a much larger drill as long as I don't come up past the top. So I'll put a tape on there and uh, come up just underneath the top of the uh, platform. A couple of things I learned this week about the layout. Of course, I, I'm running different combinations, starting to anyway. I have not run every possible combination of rolling stock and locomotive and everything yet. And I discovered that although um, most, so far, most of my locomotives can negotiate this little S turn just fine. The uh, class 52 the Daypole model doesn't like it at all because it sort of goes out and then it comes back around. It's not that much but my solution at least for now without tearing up all the track that I've already got laid is to put a check rail here. I put that in this morning because I just put this on the on the track this morning, try it out. And uh, it just lifts it lifts one of the bogies just lifts a wheel off as it goes around there. So I got that fixed, I think. I'll paint it black and maybe you even uh, take a piece of rail and bend it and put it there. Not sure yet. Something else I learned, I learned about the, uh, well, let's go over there. I'll be right back. over here to these banked curves. Um, I, I have learned something about banked curves. Um, your bogies need to be quite loose in order to negotiate them. If the, uh, the coach is too stiff, then it, uh, 
it fouls. Now the uh, the longer coaches, the Mark Threes, they they don't seem to care about anything. They just roll sweep. But uh, these Mark Mark Ones, I guess they are. Mark Ones and Twos, the shorter coaches, in other words, and uh, I guess a shorter bogey. They have they have real trouble with these curves. Unless you really loosen up those bogeys. Not to the point they'll fall off, but pretty close. Because that is a pretty steep. Super elevated curve. And I was having trouble. Things were coming off. Why is that? Well, it, I studied it for a while and finally decided it had to do with the fact that it was the coach was just too stiff. So I started loosening bogeys and then all that went away. Started running sweet. Um, let's see, what else? Well, you might enjoy this. I've got some of my buildings out. I don't know that this is the way I'm going to set them up, but I now have a little street. Probably going to put the shop down closer to the station. I know some people have expressed quite an interest in the uh, girder bridge, so I thought we'd go take a closer look at it today. And. Uh, You can see what you think. I'll be right back. I like the bridge a lot, but I also like these uh, supports that I found. I thought they went with the arched viaduct rather well. In fact, when I finish the station area, I think I'm going to work on this area next. And the girder bridge is really supporting the trains. Oops, I bumped something here. Move that, it's the tripod. The uh, girder bridge is really supporting the train. It's, it's quite firm. I don't think the train moves much at all. Or I, I don't think the bridge moves much at all when the train goes over it. Tell you what, I'll find some way to support the camera over here and we can watch. If memory serves me right, oh, it, it's a Pratt girder bridge, by the way. But it, it uh, it's quite a beautiful thing. It's so so many little pieces and details on it, rivets and uh, open uh, lattice girders. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Or actually it was a picture of it that I saw. And I thought, oh, there's got to be some place I can use that on my, on my railway. Of course, it takes a pretty big hole to run across. And so instead of having two big holes, one on one side, one on the other, I thought, well, I'll just have one big hole.
I suspect there's dirt on the track and that's what made that uh, sound. I don't feel any. Farland. <laughs> 